When identifying trees, there are a few things that you can look for to help you figure out the species. For the three trees in this video, I'll show you the overall form or shape of the tree, the bark textures and colors, and the twigs and buds. Each of these features will be different depending on the species. Branches are probably one of the first things you will notice. So the way the branches come off the trunk and the angle in which they grow can give hints to the tree species. Another part of the tree that's useful in identification is the bark. It can be smooth and flat, have cracks, be flaky or scaly, or be peeling and shaggy. The bark is the tree's way of protecting itself from disease and infection, so please leave it intact without pulling or ripping it off to help keep the tree healthy. The last identifying feature we'll look at are the twigs and buds and the patterns they grow in. Most trees have either alternate branching or opposite branching. The more common of the two, alternate branching, is where the twigs and buds grow one at each node and alternate sides. Opposite branching is where the twigs and buds come out directly across from each other. Most trees have alternate branching, but there are a few tree families that are opposite, like maples. Now that you know what to look for, let's identify a few trees. First, let's take a look at this common street and yard planting, the silver maple. One of the first things I notice about the silver maple is its light gray bark. The bark at the base of the tree is the oldest, and on the silver maple it tends to be very shaggy, peeling in strips at the top and bottom. As you look up the tree at the smaller branches, you can get an idea of what the tree looked like when it was young. In this case, the bark becomes smooth and flat. Another special thing you'll notice about silver maples are the bright red buds and flowers covering the twigs during this time of year. Many trees are wind pollinated, so their flowers bloom before the coverage of leaves. These trees are covered with these tiny inconspicuous flowers. If you have spring allergies, trees like this might be the culprit. Once these flowers are pollinated, they can begin developing into the helicopter samaras we all know and love. Next we'll take a look at a non-native conifer, Norway spruce, that comes from, you guessed it, Norway and Europe. It's not an aggressive invasive species and does well in yards and most conifer woods. A common trait in Norway spruce are its hanging branches. You'll notice while the main branches are perpendicular to the tree, the newer branches that come off it hang freely. Looking at the bark, the texture is much different from the silver maple. This bark has flaky scales instead of strips. The color is darker gray with reddish brown underneath. When looking up close at the branches, you'll notice that each needle is attached to the branch individually, unlike a pine that would have its needles attached in bundles. Between the needles, you can see that the newest twigs often have bright yellow bark. Finally, a dead giveaway of this tree are its cones. The cones are usually high up on the tree, but you can often find many that have fallen around the base. They can be as long as 6 inches with thin diamond-shaped scales. As an evergreen, Norway spruce provides shelter for roosting birds, a place for animals to build nests, as well as being a food source for red squirrels and seed-eating birds. The last tree we'll look at is a really high-quality native tree. This is a mature bur oak, and this individual is at least 200 years old. It's likely that it wasn't planted here intentionally, and was probably left as a remnant when the land was converted to a suburb. Not every community will have large remnant trees like this, however many are planting high quality natives like this as new street trees. So looking at the overall form of the bur oak, some people say it looks like a Halloween tree, kind of gnarled with branches twisting in all directions. As we get closer, we can see how thick the bark is. The furrows are so deep that you can actually grab the ridges. As you look up, you can see how the ridges of the bark split and intersect every few inches. The bark is furrowed and ridged all the way down to the new alternating twigs. Even though oak trees are deciduous, they often hang on to some of their dead leaves throughout the winter. Oak leaves take longer to decompose than maple or other species, so you'll likely still find them on the ground nearby in spring. These leaves have a wavy edge with a rounded fan-shaped top. You might also find some acorns on the ground, or just the fringed acorn caps. 
Bur oaks have the largest acorn of all the oaks and are a valuable food source to wildlife. If you like learning about these trees, see if you can find these species in your yard or neighborhood. Or branch out and use a field guide to try identifying any other trees you come across.